The following is a presentation of CBC Sports. They worked day and night, more than 260 hours of work, more than 600 centimeters of snow fell, and they built a rider's dream. We can go fast, we can go high, we do have power. But what's the point if there's no individualism, no uniqueness, no style? We had a park in our minds Red Bull put it on snow. Come ride with us. Just having all the riders together, I mean, when we ride contests together, we're definitely always having fun, always cheering for each other, but now to just be like out here and have no pressure of like doing anything kind of, it's just so cool, you know, just kind of cruising around, like always starting day, cruising in the little park, and then getting back to the actual features, and I think the vibe is so good right now, and it's just like having to ride with your, your best homie. Doing this since I'm 15, I'm 23 now, so it's been the most motivating part of my career is just inspiring people, giving them motivation to do things. Like a lot of people tell me that I'm the reason they started snowboarding and that's like a, a reason to never stop. You know, that if I can create that feeling for somebody, then I'm doing what makes me happy. Style versus progression, whether that out of 180 or minus 180 to tuck it in and go quicker or to like poke it out and slow it down that's always a hard one where can it go how much farther can it go you know like are people really going to be doing four flips with an 1800 at the olympics and stuff like it's just really really crazy like i don't see it progressing too much more than it is i think it's kind of going to have to start getting more steezy I plan on snowboarding for as long as I can, regardless of sponsors, contests, or anything. I, I just love snowboarding so much that I will try to do it until my body just doesn't work anymore. I really don't care. I think I literally always think that I'll live out here and just snowboard, just even if I'm just getting by. I love it that much that I'll, I'll probably, my mom will probably be like, you know, you're 45 now and you should probably get a job. but. I'll still be riding. <laughs> what was your favorite part of snowboarding when you were younger before you did contests? Favorite part of snowboarding before I was competing was probably just going one for one with you. There was a really bad flat down box at Mission Ridge. And I remember we just learned every <laughs> every trick together. Like you would do something, I'd do something. And then we always had fun filming each other too. I remember that. And what about you guys? I think probably boarding with me and Ty growing up. We've known each other since we were like 10. And just riding around St. Louis, kind of like out back. Just those were the days for sure. It was really fun. And now Seb, you started, you were like doing pro contests at 13 which is crazy, so if you can remember before you were 13 years old, because I can't, yeah. what was your favorite part of snowboarding at that time? Even when I was 13, when I started competing, you know, it wasn't like as crazy as it is right now, yeah. but I think just being out there, you know, like here, you know, just riding with the homies and just not having the pressure of like having to troll down like that day, yeah. it's just like progression happened every day, mm -hmm. but it happens with just having fun and riding with your homies. 
I feel really special and I'm sure Seb does to be able to like lead the way in a sense before there was even like a sl slope style program before it was in the Olympics. For sure. And then they see like, oh, like if we work hard, we can get there too. And it's pretty cool to see these guys come yeah. into their own. What's it like, Mikey, like to watch these dudes who, I mean, you guys are only, you're 23 and you're 24, so, but you guys are the veterans, the wily yeah. vets in the team, right? <laughs> and big 20 year old Mike, what's it like coming up under these guys? I've watched these boys since, yeah, I was growing, coming up in the sport, like watching Mark win his first Aaron style and all that. So it's just crazy even sitting here being able to like chat with you guys and say that we were right on the same team. I remember player. seeing <laughs> Seb do a, the Tootsie Roll back in the day. Double side cork 1080. <laughs> back double. Good. Where are you from, buddy? Backside double cork 1080. And it was. <laughs> and it was. It was insane. I just remember looking at it so many times and just mm -hmm. feeling like, how did someone at 15 do this trick? Should we go to your end? You guys are really good. You guys are smart ass Greg, dudes, you led that. Yeah, yeah buddy. Fucking you. train conductor. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. yeah boys. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Backside cork, double cork. <laughs> <laughs> no, no wonder why I call it loser. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like this. It's really scary. Phantom's ready. Okay, Mark is dropping. Hey okay, guys. Stay down there. Okay, I got Mark on deck. Hey, Thomas, Mark. Yeah, Mark. Yeah, Mark. Yeah, TV Mark ready, judges yeah, ready. Yeah, guys. Yeah, guys. <laughs> Everybody. Have a good one. Right side. Right. Yep. Yeah. Why is this thing different? Like what is different about it? I think the main idea was just to build like fun feature that you could be like super creative on it or just do tricks that are simple but it's just like that's what snowboarding all about. It doesn't need to be the, the gnarliest trick, you know, like yeah. every day. Snowboarding, higher, faster, stronger. That's all the other sports in the Olympics, right? Like the whole point of being a 100 meter sprinter is just to run as fast as you possibly can, cross the line, pull <laughs> like that. In snowboarding, it's not like that. It's not like that at all. People that don't understand the sport think they want to do five backflips off a jump. <laughs> is that true? Mark, do you want to go do five There are people in our industry that think like that. that there are, there's like three of them. Yeah. When you ask snowboarders what their favorite thing to do snowboarding is, it's like riding with a friend. When you ask anybody in the world that snowboards, they like to go out and adventure or free ride, or maybe they like to get crazy in the park, but they're sure as hell not doing five flips or yeah, four yeah. flips. It's just insane that like, we need to show everybody that how fun snowboarding is to get more people into the sport because what we do on a weekend basis is not obtainable. But when we post little clips, people just freak out on that and they love that and they're gonna try that that weekend, you know? And I think it's good to have both. But if everybody just focuses on the Olympics, it's just gonna take snowboarding in this terrible direction and look a lot like aerial skiing. Like everybody's coaches, there's microphones up at the top now. Like it's just there's insane. It's, and it's fine and it's great to have that support because that brings out the best in everybody's aerial awareness and flipping With ability. IPads. That's just the worst thing about big air is like, yeah. that's all it is, at least in slope style. If we push for more creative features, it'll separate athletes and the riders that really show they're having a good time and can board, it really stands up. Talk to me about style, like talk about for example, your brother Mark. What's Mark's style? Well, I mean, he's incredibly stylish. He's powerful. He's extremely technically gifted. And I think that is the reason to Mark's success. He does the hardest tricks, but he makes them look so easy. When you watch Mark snowboard, he'll do a 1440 triple cork, but it makes it look easy. You're like, I could almost do that. You know, like I could get out there and do that. 
Tyler, talk about Tyler. Ty, uh, T-Dog. He grew up dirt biking, and he's an incredible snowmobiler, and he's a very in-your-face, he's loud, he's funny. I don't know, he's Northern Ontario, if I'm <laughs> <laughs> gonna be in unpolitically correct. No, he's the man, but he's more of a just get it done. Like, he can do flat 1440s, which uh, to the people at home, you see a lot of people do 1440s and they cork a little what, bit. They go off kilter. 1440 is four full rotations. So In four full 360s. At the same time. Four full, yes, absolutely. But he does his flat, right? So he's mm -hmm. doing his flat as opposed to corking, which you see Mark and Max and Seb do, which brings the rotation around a little bit easier. But he's just so aggressive, you yeah. know? And it looks really, really cool. At a lot of the World Cups, we've seen him do a switch backside 1260 with a Japan grab. Nobody else is doing this. It's very aggressive, a lot of things going on. But yeah. that's the way that he is as a person, you know? Yeah. So it does really replicate their style. And when you say Tyler, the on the exact opposite end of the scale, there's my Mikey Cicerelli, who's very smooth, like a very smooth operator. You could tell him from miles away because it looks like he's not even moving a muscle when it he's does. snowboarding. Yeah. You know, like we saw him just come off that jump there and he's so quiet in the air. How about Seb Toots? Seb Toots? Probably the most technical and best snowboarder I've ever been around. Mark and myself and Seb got to ride together a lot when we were younger and Seb could do every trick since he was like 13. He can do anything on any feature anywhere. What's your style on a snowboard? On style? my butt. That's my style. <laughs> <laughs> on the butt. I'm learning, folks. I'm, I know vert, I need scoozy, I know shredding, and I know how to be on my butt on a snowboard. That's it. We're All learning. Right. Thanks, Craig, man. We definitely had like some really uh, fun activities to do after riding. Uh, Sometimes it was just the weather was kind of bad, so we had some off day. Me, Mark, and Mikey, we barked in at the bar for one night. That was like pretty fun. You know, going out for drinks and dinner and just like just having fun, getting loose for a couple of nights. It's just, uh, it's part of it. It's just so fun, like just to, I don't know, just being out with the homies and uh, get a couple drinks and it's, it's been good. Talking about legends, Devin Walsh, coolest guy, humble, like just amazing. He is one of the most iconic snowboarders. He was one of the first guys to go out in the backcountry on big mountains and bring freestyle snowboarding to that terrain, which is just groundbreaking at the time. It's pretty cool to shred with Devin. He's a Canadian backcountry OG. Legend in the sport. Devin Walsh basically created style. He literally has the best style out of anyone in the backcountry. I've never gotten to meet Devin Walsh, so, and it was just cool riding with him, to having him follow us through the course and just get to chat with him. <laughs> You've defined snowboarding in Canada. And I know this will make you uncomfortable because you're such a humble man. But take us from the beginning. I grew up like Vancouver. It rained a lot, so I picked up the new sport, snowboarding. And we started riding the runs, and then we started to realize there was a lot of backcountry. And, and to get fresh landings, we needed to just go just outside the ropes. So we'd do that. and started to build jumps and learn new tricks. What was your worst accident? It was either the throat or I knocked four teeth out too. Four, which ones? All of the front. They look so good though. Yeah, that's why, because they're all fake. <laughs> Seven fake ones. Do you see yourself as old? I, before I got that legend award, <laughs> I didn't, I was just trying to stay relevant. And then all of a sudden I was old. <laughs> You're legend. Not old. Yeah, I know, and not at all, but I don't feel old. You know, I'm not retired and I'm snowboarding and I'm up there riding hit runs with all the kids and I, I'm still loving it. What's it mean to ride with them now, knowing where they've taken it? You started yeah. it. I'm in awe now. Some of the stuff they do is pretty incredible. I mean, I don't do triple courts. <laughs> You've seen it, right? I've seen it it's, and I'm like... It's madness. Yeah. For Canadians, the Olympics is the big thing, right? All the kids, you know, at home watch X Games or the Olympics mm -hmm. and they see the highest level, like 16, 16, 14, mm -hmm. you know, all these yeah. crazy spins. And 
kids nowadays can do the rotations, but they can't make a carve down the mountain. Yeah. And what these guys are trying to show here is, yeah, it's not only about the big spins, it's about preserving sort of where snowboarding came from. Well, legend, amazing guy. Thank you for opening up today. Thanks for hanging. So if you guys had the opportunity to control the direction, the progression of slope style, you would rather see maybe the course progress a little bit, something new, something different, yeah. the quarter pipes, rather than just making the jump 20 feet back so you can do another flip. This is the best thing, you know, to showcase snowboarding and to really show what it is, you know, like if it just becomes to like who flipped the most, who spin the most, then we're not really showcasing like what snowboarding is all about because do we do triples in every day like when we just ride for fun? No, we don't, you yeah. know, like we, we have to practice those tricks because those tricks make us win contests and we all want to win contests. But I feel like now we're getting to a point that we've been pushing progression so much that I feel like, you know, course is going to get more creative. People enjoy snowboarding on creative stuff. So this is what more and more parks are going to shape up to look like. So we're setting a tone, you could say. Exactly. First line, for first shift. shift, skate hard. Skate hard, dump and chase, don't Ab be selfish. Absolutely. Short shift. <laughs> Absolutely, I love it. You want to be known as a snowboarder that had longevity and like leaves a legacy. It's not necessarily about one contest. That is and snowboarding, fun. there's so many different sides to it. You want to be a part of everything because all the sides bring stoke. So